Okay. So, on my charging station. So, this is the funny thing is, right, is, okay, I've got, what is it, 270, well, they're supposed to be 270 volts, the batteries. And, way finger over the lens. 270 volts. And, um, so it's like, well, how do you charge 270 volts? You know, like, you need a whacking great charger. No! <laughs> of course, because mains is 240 volts, but that's 240 volts AC. And when you rectify that, it's about 340. Right, well, charging a capacitor, the most I've got is 330. Okay. And, uh, but... The moral of the story is, is that it's over the 270 volts which is needed to charge these. The trick is to control it. Now, nickel metal hydride batteries, which is what these are, apparently need a constant current charge and they need monitoring. But the manufacturers of the batteries say that you can use a maintenance charge, right, which is very low and it will be fine although one manufacturer i think it's panasonic says no you should turn it off but generally speaking in fact these are panasonic i think anyway whatever so so long as the current is low enough i can charge these and what i've done of course is i've stuffed them through a resistor bank which effectively is 400 sorry 4.4k uh, and um, what would it be about 15 watts with that resistor it's five um, 22k resistors each of three watts as far as I can tell right and um, so that that obviously is going to drop here so that the current is going to be pretty low it's going to be milliamps right which is enough for it to have a and it has a potential difference across it as well okay so I've got this battery currently, uh, this one here is one that I took out of a car and it's about, I don't know, five, six years old maybe? And I put it on charge and it's been on a charge for quite a, quite a while and now it's just sat and the voltage is currently, as you can see, it's about sort of 228, dropping slightly. Okay and um, <clears throat> it didn't I mean I it didn't get up to its full voltage which is the funny thing oh hang on oh no it's the wrong one <laughs> sorry so it's this battery that it's measuring the voltage of and it's dropped it was originally on about 270 260 and now it's dropped to about 230 okay so this this voltage is measuring that battery right now I've got another battery here that that battery there had zero volts pretty much on it Right, and obviously it's retaining a charge now of 200, you know, 226. I'm guessing it'll probably drop to about 200. This guy here had about 30 volts, and so I'm put, putting it on a charge now, and it's a slow charge. And if I can put the camera out, you can see it's now up from 30, and I've only put it on charge about 10 minutes ago. Right, and it's now up to about 80 volts. Right, this one under here, right. That's why I got confused. This one's on about 215 now, right? Uh, I put that on charge. It's been on charge for about 20 hours, and it came up from its, I think it was on about 100 and something volts, and it, get, it I brought it up to 220-ish. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just bringing these up to the sort of 250, hopefully up to the full voltage of the battery, right ish do you know what i mean over 250 volts each and then once i've actually got them up with this low power charge because the problem is the potential difference across that resistor you know i mean this one for instance was on zero and so i had the full mains voltage across those resistors and they were getting a bit hot it wasn't over the power of the resistors i think uh, to be honest if it was at full mains you'd end up dissipating about 12 watts and there's 15 watts worth of resistors there so it's fine it was just getting a bit warm um, 
But it's brought the voltage up, and, so, and I'm going to cycle these now for a, for a few days, and eventually I'll get them up to over 250 volts. Right? And then what I can do is I can use these beasties here, which I've actually dug out. I'm really chuffed. These units had, um, they have contactors in them, and uh, the battery management is in that gap there, basically. And so I've dug them out. These are the battery management units. One of them's fried. The other one's okay. I might even plug it on eBay. And these are the uh, units which contain the contactors, and they're the contactors. Now these beasties are worth. The cheapest I've found on Maplin for this sort of power is about fifty somewhere. No, I think it was about seventy-five quid. That's a lot, right? <laughs> And so these are worth somewhere between 50 and 100 quid each. <laughs> I've got seven. <laughs> these ones came out because they got two each, right? And so these these two came out of one, these two came out of another. These two came out of this one, I think, originally, right? But I've also got some more. These ones I dug out of a Prius 1 because I had two battery units from a Prius 1. And... Um, <clears throat> And uh, they have, they had more in them. I think they had, I think it was four in each, or something. Um, I can't remember. Oh, actually no, I think it was something like three, because they ended up with, yeah, probably six of those, and one of them fried, I think, and uh, a couple of these. So I've got like, you know, <laughs> in these things alone, I've probably got about like five or six hundred quid worth of contactors there. Okay. And they came out of these batteries. And they're good, because, I mean, they, you know, these actually don't really dissipate, because the contactor only comes on, and then it starts drawing the power. So we actually not, they, they don't arc, because it's actually switched off already. You see? So, anyway, that's quite a bonus. And plus I've got these things here, which are... Uh, Hall effect current units, but I've got to work out they've got a three pin unit. I've got one apart, and I can see there's a capacitor in there. And there's an obvious these are the three pins here, and this right hand one's obviously the ground. And so, all I've got to do is trace back using continuity check to see which one is the positive pin from the capacitor, and then the other pin will be the output. And I'm pretty sure they'll work on 12 volts, right? And I've got two of those, these things are worth a lot, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, these resistors, that's <laughs> a resistor that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what is it? Oh man, it's not really doing it too well, is it? There you go, 60 watts, 10 ohm. It's a 10 ohm resistor, and I've got three of these. So I can put them three in series, which will give me uh, 30 ohms at 180 watts, right? Which means I can then put them in series and uh, I can then put a higher speed charge on these and actually get them up and get the car get the charge up right I can meter the current that's going through them so I can find out how quickly they will actually charge because I'm presuming once they get over 250 volts then that's probably somewhere around the sort of five or ten percent charge mark and then I can then put them on charge to bring them up to somewhere around about 80 80 90 percent charge using those and then once they're up to that charge um, I can then, you know, because you can see apparently these, they kind of flatten out, the current current curve flattens out a bit. But I can just time them because I know what the capacity is and I'll know how much current's going in, so I'll know how long it takes to charge them, so I'll just charge them and we'll see. And also they start getting warm when they're uh, full, when they're actually charged. And so I know all these things. And what we're going to do basically is we're going to try and put these into a G-Wiz. You see, and the irony is, and this is the thing that I don't get right, is that those are G Wiz batteries there, right? You've got, you can see how many that there is, eight, right? There are eight G Wiz batteries, right? And that is 200 amp hour, uh, 10 kilowatt hours worth of batteries, right? That's what that is, right? Now, these, each pack is six amp hour. So that whole battery there is 6 amp hour at 273 volts. And so is that, and so is that. Right? 
But obviously, the GWIS doesn't work on 273 volts. It works on 48. But what I can do is I can either do, I can put 7 in series, which will give me about 50 volts, because it's not, it's 7.2 volts each pack. And so that'll give me uh, about 52 volts, whereas that gives me 48, right? Which means there's 38 in there, so that's 7. And obviously, I've got three sets here. And so I've got 38 times 3, and then you divide that by 7. You end up roughly, basically, with half of the amount of capacity of the lead-acid ones, right? But I'm thinking they take up more volume, <laughs> you know. But the idea is that I thought nickel metal hydrides have a higher, higher density. But yet, you know, I don't know. I think maybe three of those batteries is the same volume as one of these, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Which means these take up more space, physically volume. I'll have to do the sums again. But basically it's half the capacity of the lead acids. That there is half, represents half the capacity of the lead acids. Right. But the discharge curve is much better because nickel metal hydrides, they can maintain the power. And obviously I'll be putting them in parallel because I'll have like seven packs. I can do eight packs actually, right? So as not to confuse the uh, the charger, I can put eight packs in in series because they have eight six volt batteries, whereas these are seven point two, which means that it'll have a higher output voltage because then it'll be uh, nearer to sixty volts instead of forty eight, which is actually the charged voltage is somewhere around fifty two of that pack. And this will be nearer 60, so it means the car will go faster. It'll have much more punch, right? Or I can just put seven packs in, <clears throat> which means it'll be around about the same voltage as the lead acids, right? Uh, but I'll have more. But either way, I mean, it doesn't matter, because if it's a higher voltage, it just means that you'd be using less current for the same amount of power. But, yeah, here we've got roughly five kilowatt hours, I think, in total of battery, whereas there I've got ten. And it doesn't make sense because lead acid is supposed to be uh, more. The lead acid is supposed to be higher charge density, uh, lower charge density than nickel metal hydrides. Well, it might be something. It might be a weight thing instead of volume. Or maybe going by weight instead of volume. So we'll see anyway. But it's probably going to take me a good few days to get these charged up. But I'm guessing, I'm sort of targeting the end of the week. I'm on Tuesday now. So it'll be the end of the week by the time I get these packs charged. And then we'll know what condition they're in. It'll be interesting. And that'll do, I think, for now. And I'm using open camera here, which is quite good. Better than the original Sony app. 